Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. What is my calling in life is the title of this devotion. Do you ever think about that? Does it ever come to your heart? Or maybe, maybe you do wonder, what am I called to? What, what is really God's call upon my life? And that can be an interesting journey. And there are many things that can pull on you and, and try to direct you in it. And I believe personally what is most healthy for anyone to discover the calling that is upon their life is to start at the foundation, start at the beginning point. You know, if, if, if somebody would say, hey, you know, I think, I think you, sh you should have a son or a daughter. You go, okay, okay, yeah. Oh God, I should have a son and daughter, right? Okay, that's not a bad prayer, but maybe, Lord, I need a spouse. I need to get married, right? That would be a fundamental action to take to see that come to pass. You get married. And after you get married and have built a union in the spirit together, God will bless that union like he's promised in Psalm 127 and give you a son or a daughter. And it comes to pass what you were called to. But to not get married will cause that what you were called to difficult to come to pass. If, if you get my just simple example here, I know we can go around the mountain, yeah, but we can adopt the, the, No, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm just giving you a simple example. So where should I start is my point to find my calling. First Corinthians chapter one, verse four through nine. Okay. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you came short in no gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For me, this would be the most fundamental place to start to discover your calling in life. Let God's call, not any other man, not your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your boss, not the king, not a prince, not a queen, not a ruler, no, God. God, the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, let him have first call upon your life. You do have to decide who, who, whose call you follow in this life. God has first call, he has first claim because he has made us and not we ourselves, Psalm 100. We are his handiwork and he calls you into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the beginning place. This is the foundation for you to discover all that God's predestined you to and all that he's prepared and planned for you. And I plead with you this, this day, let this come to your heart. The Apostle Paul, he had followed things that he thought were the calling of his life. He was a Pharisee. A Pharisee, especially in his day, was the upper echelons of society within the Jewish community. They were the people that were the judges and they were the people that were, you know, influential also in the political arena as in influencing the, the, the way the nation was being guided and, and led politically and so forth. I mean, these were powerful people, the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, of course, the high priest was a Pharisee. And these Pharisees, they, they were so influential. So the Apostle Paul, he was a man that grasped right for the top. He was a Pharisee and he was of the tribe of Benjamin. And he was a man that was, when it came to keeping the law, 
he was the best example of them all. And, he, and, and that was his pursuit. That was his like, this is what I'm to pursue. And in that pursuit, he was zealous beyond measure. He, talks, he says all this about himself, what I'm saying to you. But he says all of these things that were of such high value to me, I have come to consider as a combined loss for the more excellent knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, can, I have suffered the loss of all these things. In other words, not been an easy process. I've suffered the loss of all things and I've now come to consider them as mere dung in comparison to the priceless privilege of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. That's in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. And the Apostle Paul, he began to realize that these things that he felt he was called to in comparison to the call of God were nothing. And you can honestly pursue so many things in your life and still miss the boat still miss the target, still miss that real inward satisfaction. I am in who I'm supposed to be. I'm doing what I'm called to, to do. I, you can still have that gnawing feeling inside. What is it, Lord? I, I, I pursued this, I got it. I wanted that, I got it. I, everything that I've pursued, I've gotten, and still I feel that lacking inside of me. Why? because it is God inside of you calling you into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, When it pleased God, who had separated me from my mother's womb, to call me by His grace, so that He might reveal His Son in me and I might preach Him. You see, the Apostle understood that God's calling is a work of grace, it's a work of God's kindness and goodness coming into your life. The calling of God is not some obligation of condemnation. No, it is a work of grace. It is a work of absolute goodness and mercy by which He draws you and pulls on you and labors by His Spirit in you and pulls you and calls you. Jesus said in John 6, 45, nobody can come to me unless my Father draws him, even as it is written in the law, all those who are taught of God will come to me. All those who have taught and heard, have been taught by God and have heard from the Father will come to me. Nobody can come to me. You see, it's a work of God's, God's calling. And I'm saying this, and I really feel the Holy Spirit here is starting to take hold of some of us here that God says, my calling upon your life is a work of my grace. It's a work of me drawing you inwardly, continuously to live in fellowship with Jesus. I tell you, I feel that drawing. Paul calls it the upward call of God in Christ Jesus to take a hold of that for which Christ took a hold of me in Philippians 3. I feel that drawing in me. I wake up in the middle of the night several times and I feel the drawing. I get up in the morning early, very early, and I feel the drawing. I read my Bible and I pray and the spirit of life in Christ just floods my being. And the Heavenly Father has drawn me into fellowship with Jesus. That is the calling. That is the calling. My goodness, what an amazing grace. Let me read you another little verse here out of 2 Timothy, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Who saved us, God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has now been revealed in us by the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. In other words, he says, this holy calling of God has brought into us the revelation of Jesus Christ, who himself has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light in us through the through the gospel, my goodness, 
this calling of God, how can it be compared to anything? It is beyond anything else. Let me close with you in Romans chapter 8, please. Romans 8. And we know, verse 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, for whom He foreknew, He describes the purpose here, for whom He foreknew, in other words, He said in Genesis 1:26, let us make man in our image, that's what it means, foreknew. He foreknew us before He made us. Yes, it's like somebody in their innermost being can see something and then they paint it. They foreknew that painting. God foreknew us before the foundation of the world to be conformed to the image of His Son. So whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he then predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, these he also called. Who did he foreknew? Man, mankind. Let us make man in our image, and he made them both male and female and blessed them. Mankind. He didn't say this of the angels. No, he said this of mankind. Amen. It is mankind whom he has, he has foreknown to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the first among them. And those whom he predestined, he called, whom he called, he also justified, whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all? How shall we not with him freely give us all things? Who then can separate us from his great love? You know, friends, the calling. If you live, in fellowship with Jesus, I guarantee you, God will see to it that what particular work He has predestined you to, He works it. When I was maybe 14, 15 or so, my father said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, son, don't ever worry what you will do for God. Just be sure He knows where to find you. He said, remember King David? I said, yeah, Dad. He said, well, he faithfully served his dad, taking care of his sheep. And the scripture says, I have found David, a man of my own heart, who will do all of my will with my holy oil. I have anointed him, Psalm 78, I think. And David, God raised up and made to be the shepherd of his people Israel. And he shepherded them with a skillful hand, it says it there in those Psalms. And he, my dad looked at me and said, son, the Lord, he knows where to find you. Just keep in fellowship with Jesus. I'm so grateful my father put that in my heart. I'd never be where I am today if I didn't live in fellowship with Jesus. Why? I'd get totally lost. How many years that people said, oh, I don't know why you're here. I don't know what you do. And they would make you feel like failures and I'm in the wrong place doing the wrong thing and it's never gonna happen. Abraham could have thought that. People could have come over there and said to Abraham, you know, Abraham, I don't know why you live here. This is the land of the, the, the Jebusites, the Amorites. The, 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 why are you living here with these kinds of people? You don't have your own place. You live in a tent. And you say you're going to be a father of many nations. You must have the wrong wife because she's barren. It's never going to... If, if Abraham would have allowed himself to have those kinds of voices in his life, he would have never seen what God promised come to pass. But when we live in fellowship with Jesus, who reassures us that all God's promises are yea and amen through Him in our lives, then we will certainly be in all that He predestined us to because He works all things together for good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. I know what the purpose is of God for my life, and that is to be conformed to the image of His Son. And as long as I live in that, He takes care of the rest. As my marriage, he takes care of the rest. I know the secret to my happy marriage is me being like Jesus to Virginia. I know the secret for me to be a good dad to my children and grandchildren is for me to be like Jesus. I know the secret to me being a pastor in this church for the last 30 some plus years is to be like Jesus. As long as I live in my calling, God takes care of the rest. Amen. Have a good day.